but Marshall got here because of one reason, quickness. They're quick, they're quick, and they're quicker. And of course, the reason, Arthur AG. Look at this man, he just explodes, Dan. He puts the turbo charges on. He can get down court as quick as anyone that I've ever seen in the Chicago Public League. Arthur AG will be up and down the floor tonight. I think this young man has a turbo jet in his gym <laughs> shoes, so we really should be in for an outstanding game. Uh, he won't be the only one. And Luther Bedford, of course, is the Marshall coach. Luther's been here, well, this is the fourth time to Champaign, and he's hoping he can get to the championship game tonight as well well I would think that uh, since both of us real quick somebody's have to slow the other team down and we plan on slowing them down and hopefully they can't slow us down so everybody watching at home do those neck exercises in this next commercial <laughs> break because you're gonna need them starting lineups coming up in a minute manual and Marshall but first one of your network sponsors the Toyota dealers of Illinois Joe Gargiola and Johnny Bench at Toyota's big league sales event. Earl Weaver's getting them ready to deal. You, a customer comes in for option package savings up to a thousand. What do you say? Right. How about incentives up to a thousand on a truck, Camry, Corolla? How about fifteen hundred on selling? We've never done that before. Yes! This team is ready. Don't miss Toyota's big league sales event. We're really playing ball. Welcome back to the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. Dan Rohn and Kenny McReynolds set for the second semifinal game. Peoria Manuel and Chicago Marshall. And some of the game notes for this one. Manuel, certainly no stranger to the Assembly Hall, has been here five times in the last six years. And Kenny Dick Van Syok, the dean of high school basketball coaching in Illinois, 42 seasons, 26 here with Manuel. That's unbelievable, Dan. 756 wins. That is just an unbelievable record. And on the other side, Luther Bedford, of course, has been here. This is his fourth time. Luther, certainly not the only uh, good squad in Chicago this year in the Public League, but he's the one that made it to Champaign, and he's still alive in the Final Four. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for today's second semifinal game, featuring the Rams of Peoria Manuel, Entering this game with a record of 30 and 2, and the Commandos of Chicago Marshall, who come into this game with a record of 22 and 6. At one forward for Manuel, a 5'11 senior, number 22, Tony Freeman. At forward for Chicago Marshall, a 6'3 junior, number 30, Cesare Christian. At the other forward for Peoria Manuel, a 6'1 senior, number 50, Sam Davis. At the other forward for Marshall, a 6'1 sophomore, 21, Ontario Brown. At center for Manuel, a 6'3 junior, 54, Clint Ford. And at center for Marshall, a 6'4", junior, 33, Quadell Kimball. At one of the guards for the Rams, a 5'11", senior, number 20, Mike Grayer. And at one of the guards for the Commandos, a 6'0", senior, number 11, Arthur Agee. At the other guard for Peoria Manuel, a 5'10 senior, 34, Howard Nathan. And at the other guard for Marshall, a 5'10 senior, number 10, Derek Zinnerman. And now introducing the coaches. First for Peoria Manuel assistant coaches, 
Wayne McLean, Jerry Stoll, Chuck Westendorf, and Ken Meissner, and the head coach in his 26th season at Manuel, Dick Van Sayak. And for Chicago Marshall assistant coach Al Williams, and the head coach in his 18th season at Marshall, Luther Bedford. Those the players and coaches and the officials for game two this afternoon, Willie Jackson and Jim LaPatina. So the opening tip coming up in a moment. Right now, one of your network sponsors is Siba Gagi. Seems like every day there's something in the news about the environment. People are concerned about the soil in the air and about our water supply. They want to make sure it's safe for their families safe for the future. I do too, because I work with chemicals. So I use them safely. I never use more than I need, and I keep them away from water sources, because I care about my kids, and I care about my land. Brought to you on behalf of the American Farmer by the makers of Duel. Here's the matchup for game two this afternoon, the semifinals, the IHSA Boys Class AA Tournament, and here are the individual matchups. Uh, the size advantage going to uh, Chicago Marshall, but really not by very much. Uh, Shedzeray Christian, a big guy at 6'3", 215, and on the other side, uh, Ford for Peoria Emanuel, a big fellow inside, 6'3", uh, and probably about 220. And of course, Manuel, as we said, Kenny has never made the championship game in Dick Van Syok's 26 years. They've had some great teams, too. They've had some great teams. They've lost four consecutive semifinals. Look at it. AG controls. Here comes Marshall. Straight up man to man defense by Manuel. Christian's going to take the first shot at short. And Clint Ford has the rebound. Mike Grayer. Down nice goes pass. inside Tony Freeman and score that one. Tony Freeman opens the scoring in game two and sent him up to the free throw line. It, it doesn't take too long. Look at Tony Freeman. What an outstanding move that is, huh? Boy, oh boy. Tony Freeman takes the baseline, a little body English, and he comes away with a fancy two. Quadell Kimball picked up the personal foul, the first of the game, and trying for the three-point play is Tony Freeman. Of course, Freeman starting in place of Kevin Deal, who's on crutches. He injured an ankle early in the ball game last night. Full court press by Peoria. Marshall spreads it out, does a good job, get it down low to Christian. Boy, what would happen if Christian and Ford hit head on? Well, if we find out, we may find out before it's over with. Those two will be banging heads all afternoon down inside. It's a lot of basketball player right there in that matchup. A lot of beef. 34 is Howard Nathan, the All-American, headed for DePaul next year. Blue Demons fans who aren't feeling so good after the Demons got bounced from the NCAA last night can take some consolation in the fact that Nathan will be there next year. And Clint Ford showing us some range, Kenny. And Ford, usually, Dan, we get a guy that size, you keep him down on the blocks, but he has a nice outside touch. Kimball, Double dribble. Yep, turn it over. Marshall's pressure a little less intense in the early going than Peoria Manuel's. Then they fall back into a 1 2 2 zone. Ford, no good, and rebound by Quadell Kimball. The quick Here left handed outlet. AG's going to score it. That's what we talked about in the open, Dan. AG, you give him a step, he's gone. Good dump down. Ford couldn't get the shot. They reset. Here's Nathan for three. Howard Nathan's first shot's no good, and a scramble for the ball. Manuel got it back. Good dish inside, and the shot up, and a foul called on Christian. 
Christian says, what did I do? Boy, up and down the floor, Dan. Little out of control. Now let's see if we can pick up the foul. See, basketball on the floor. Nobody can pick it up. Nobody wants control. It's the little round thing, fellas. Watch the pass, Dan, right there. And boy, that's a tough foul on Christian because he had his back to the play. Oh, look at Nathan. Right down inside, oh, it goes oh. to four. What a pass. Zinnerman. Locking heads out here with Mike Grayer, and Grayer is going to pick up the first manual foul of the afternoon. When you go up and down the floor like these two teams will, you're going to, I think you're going to get a lot of fouls. Hey, look at this. Look at that pass by Howard Nathan down low to the big guy, Clint Ford. 25 no points pass. and eight assists last night for oh, him, Kenny. Man. He can play. Boy, I tell you what, he'll be lighting up the Rosemont horizon. Joey Meyer told me he scored a 20 on his ACT. So he's intelligent also. Zinnerman, pull up jump shot. Nope, and the rebound, Nathan. Howard now looking to push it up. Shot on the way by Freeman right there. Tony Freeman stepping in for the injured Kevin Deal has five points already, a 9-4 manual lead. Tony Freeman's not bashful at all, Dan. Number 42 for Marshall is Moselle Williams, and another steal. This is Clint Deal. Deal, sweet oh, pass to Nathan. Howard Nathan streaking down the floor, right down the middle. Marshall wants a timeout. Luther Bedford wants to talk it over with 5.07 to go in the first. 11-4 manual over Marshall and one of your network sponsors, Country Company. I lent my car to my brother, and he demolished it. Two years old, didn't have a scratch. Funny, about a month before my agent had recommended this extra keeper coverage, $21 more a year. I remember thinking, well, I probably don't need it, but if you think so... Turns out, they gave me a brand new car. This year's model. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. I guess it's just a matter of trust. They say if you've seen one, you've seen them all. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Pork, the other white meat. For another one of those updates on fashion with passion. Now you'll notice first off, the Marshall Commandos all have very specific haircuts. They're spelled out for you. And of course, the shorts are anything but that for Peoria Manual. Back over to Kenny and Dan. Yeah, I've got some pants that are not quite as long as some of the trunks on some of these <laughs> manual guys. And just in case we forgot who he was, Cesare Christian has his name and number carved into the back of his head. Well, hey, no question about it. Marshall turns it over. Manuel back looking to build on a seven point lead here with 450 to go in the opening period. Deal missed it from way out. Nathan up but couldn't get the rebound and it's hauled out of there by Moselle Williams. Zinnerman. Cross court pass. This is AG, and he missed the layup. Oh, a little too much English, but watch Peoria run. Yeah. Right down they come into the glass. Sam Davis can't get it. Nathan missed it. They're still working the board, and finally Zinnerman comes out of there for Marshall. Zinnerman. Christian. And four. We almost hit our collision with Christian and four. Here we go. Grayer sticks the left-handed jumper. First two from Mike Grayer. It's a 13-4 Peoria lead. Boy, look at Manuel. They're shooting six out of 11. That's 54%. Ball knocked away and out of bounds. Marshall will hang on to it. Hey, you know, we saw 
how innate to do that yesterday. Just falls down, and let you try to trip over him, and then he'll steal a basketball. <laughs> Howard knows all the tricks. I don't know if Joey Meyer will let him do that to Paul, though. <laughs> then again, why not? Tony Freeman jumping in front of a pass and knocking it out of bounds right in front of our position. They really, they really played a passing lane extremely well, Dan, the uh, Ram, the Peoria manual. Chez, C-H-E-Z, standing right in front of us. 30 in his head. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he paid for that haircut. <laughs> Far side, we get a foul as Zinnerman pushed it into the corner. Howard Nathan picks it up. That's uh, number one on Howard, and the second team foul on Manning. What a first game this afternoon. They get a look at the haircut. Just 30. <laughs> In the first game today, Kenny, almost no fouls at all. Libertyville never got to the uh, free throw line. Ford out for the steal, couldn't get it. Christian back ironed it. Way up in the air, and finally hauled out by Manuel. They want to run. It's Nathan. Oh, oh man. Oh. Davis couldn't seal the deal, and back they come the other way, knocked out of bounds, and Marshall will keep it. But what a pass by Nathan. What my a goodness. show he's putting on. The commandos really need a bucket, Dan. They haven't scored in about three minutes. Look at this. Howard Nathan behind the back. Yeah, okay, you take it, baby. I don't want it. What a player. Shot raked out of there and re-stolen by Zinnerman. He thought he was going to pull up and shoot the shot, but he didn't. Maybe should have. He's double teamed now. Number 30 in orange for Manuel, Derek Booth, the brother of the ball player David Booth. Same number and everything. Shot up in the lane, no good by Quadell Kimball, but he's fouled by Clint Ford. But Marshall really needs to get untracked offensively. They've only scored four points to this point. And these are going to, you know, it's early in the ball game, but these are big free throws for Kimball because they just haven't done anything on the offensive end. Dan, why don't you get a nice Dan carved in your head? Hey, I'll tell you what, I'm trying to keep all I have right now. Two shots. Do you too? <laughs> Kimball at the free throw line. Quadell had six in the quarterfinal win last night over Batavia. That's his first of the afternoon here. Number 40 is Jerry Hester. Six foot two inch sophomore. A lot of young players on both these teams. In fact, Marshall has only two seniors that play a lot. Uh, those are the starting guards, Zinnerman and Agee. Aside from that, a lot of juniors and a couple of sophomores in there too. Now Marshall sets up for a press. Look at this. They beat it, they throw it away. They had it beaten, but the pass way too high for Nathan. Christian, that's a long two. If it goes, it's short. Here they come. Nathan one on one with Zinnerman. He's got it. The thing that makes Howard Nathan so dangerous, Dan, you never know what he's going to do. You don't know what he'll do. Zinnerman tried to anticipate, and he guessed, he guessed wrong. wrong. That time. Rodrigo Dale in some trouble. Arthur Agee spinning inside. Tough shot. Good. A real, a real tough shot because Mike Gray came over from the weak side to help out. And he got the shot off anyway. Manual 15, Marshall 8. Just under two minutes left in the opening period. Good look inside. Shot up. Knocked out of the hands of Jerry Hester. And Agee's got a breakaway. Arthur Agee was six in the first quarter. Well, somebody has to play safety for Manuel because Arthur Agee will just explode every chance he gets. Nathan Grayer, high arching jumper right there. Grayer's hit two of those. That one almost brought rain. 17-10, Manuel. Kimball, tough jump shot, good. 
really tough jump shot. He came into the lane. He met the basketball extremely well. Turnaround jump shot looked a little off balance, but he got nothing but net. Ray are going to try one for three, and it went all the way in and out again. Under a minute now. Marshall on the attack, trying to cut it to three. And a pass knocked out of bounds by Howard Nathan. Take a good look at Luther Bedford. Does he ever smile? <laughs> I thought I saw just a tiny little one last night after they'd knocked off the table. What I want to know is if Luther has any voice left after the, the uh, <laughs> vocal histrionics he had to come through over there on the bench last night. We'll see. I'm sure we'll get into his huddle before this afternoon's over. Dale, too hard for Kimball and out of bounds, too manual. Yeah, Kimball was right there. No need to just rifle the basketball. Costly turnover for Marshall. Substitution now coming in for Manuel, number 22. Tony Freeman back on and Mike Grayer. Nope. Derek Booth will sit down. Look at the pants. Knee high. Boy, Michael Jordan really started something, didn't he? Freemans are the longest basketball trunks I've ever seen. Not only are they long, they're too big for them. <laughs> Manuel going for one shot. This is something very unusual because they like to get up and down the floor. And now they're going to just take their time and go for the final shot with 20 seconds to go. Now they call a play with about 12 seconds to go. Grayer, Nathan, oh, Nathan against walked right Dale. around. Hit the side of the board. Marshall's got three seconds to get something done, and Kimball hammers it. No, he missed the layup. Oh! He went up with a left hand and missed the layup at the horn. A tough, tough break for the Commandos as the first quarter comes to an end. They trail 17-12, and one of your network sponsors is the Toyota Dealers of Illinois. Hi, I'm Joe Garagione. And I'm Johnny Ben. At Toyota's Big League Sales Event. Next up, Celica. Wow, check the stats. No wonder it's the fastest mover in its league. With 800 in option package savings on select GTs. And incentives up to 1,500 on other models. They're going to move even faster. Here's the pitch. And it's good. Look at it go. This Consumer's Digest Best Buy is leaving them in the dust. At Toyota, everyone wins. Hurry in, they're going fast. So see your Toyota dealer today. We're really playing ball. Back in Champaign, here's the closing sequence of the first quarter. Howard Nathan hits the side of the board for Manuel. Quadell Kimball, well, that's what I get for anticipating, Kenny. See, this is a tough <laughs> break for Marshall. He blows the layup. He should have slammed it, easy slam dunk. That would have brought Marshall to within three points as Lou Henson sitting back enjoying all the action right here at the Assembly Hall. It was about uh, 20 yards from his office door right there. That's not a bad <laughs> deal for him. Field goal shooting 50% for Manuel, 39 for Marshall. Not bad, 39%. Well, that last basket would have pushed him up close to 50. They're 5 of 13 so far. Manuel gets it to start the second period. Graham's having a five-point lead here. Skip past Freeman. Freeman dumps it back down to four. His shot short and a rebound by Marshall. Here they go, two on one. A.G. and Dale, nice pass. Good luck, and Dale knocks it down. Well, if that's the way you want to run a fast break, Dan, just pass the basketball. Never let it hit the floor. 17-14. Nathan and Zinnerman caught trying to reach around and tap the ball away from behind. Trying to reach around. You know who does a great job with that? It was Tony Freeman at UIC. Reaching around, slapping the basketball from behind. But Zimmerman that time hit the arm and not the basketball. Three now on Marshall as a team. They stay in a 1-2-2 zone. Three 
Zinnerman missed it. They're going deep. Zinnerman ran it down and brings it back. Marshall resets the offense. Kimball walk. Have to put the ball on the floor. He saw the big man standing right in front of him. Clint Ford. Clint Ford listed 6'3", 230. <laughs> 230? That's what I said, listed 6'3", 230. And then there's Cesare Christian right here. He listed at 215. Yeah, right. <laughs> In eighth grade, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. I think you're right. There he goes, Ford to the basket. Didn't get it up on the glass, still tipping the ball, and that one's blocked by Kimball. And as Freeman gets a rebound and goes up, he's fouled. So send him up to the free throw line, foul on 22, Rodrigo Dale. Here it is again, the Rams just dominating the backboards, Dan. Here's a shot by four, it won't go, but he keeps the basketball alive. So he's playing volleyball with it, nice head fake, puts it back up, gets it blocked, but nothing but orange shirts around the basketball, and there you see the reach in and the foul, but here's a turnover for Marshall. AG's gonna take it all the way. Boy, I like AG. He is quick. He is quick. 17-16. Marshall just hanging around, not getting too far behind. They're striking distance. Freeman let it go for three. It's no good. The rebound by Manuel. Tipped up in the air. Zinnerman had it, lost it. Wild scrambled. Ford takes it in the lane and scores. But they're really active around the office with boards. I'm going to check right there, 44, six foot eight inch junior Robin Dunnigan. Didn't play last night for Marshall in the victory over Batavia, but he's in there now. And he is by far the tallest man on the floor at 6'8". And see, that's a very, very difficult situation for a young man to be in. And we see the rebound, Manuel with the slight lead. You don't play at all last night, then you're thrown into action in the semifinal contest. Zinnerman, good penetration and a good pass, charge. but we get a charge as bodies are hitting the deck all over the place. Well, see, sometimes you over-penetrate, Dan, you know, you get across the free throw line, and it, you, you're asking for trouble, so why not stop at the line and shoot? Or pass it. You get into the land of the Giants, baby, you're asking for trouble. Foul goes against Zinnerman. That's two on him, but more importantly, five on the team now, so free throws coming up on the manual end, it'll be Clint Deal, or Clint Ford, I should say, at the line. Kevin Deal for manual out after suffering the injury last night in the quarterfinal victory. You know, we were talking about gym shoes last night. What do you think of Ford's gym shoes? They're big. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen some shoes in this tournament. Batavia with the all red last night. Ford knocks down the first one, seven in the game for him. Manuel's got black with orange trim. Pretty good looking, actually. Some of the guys do, and some are wearing white. Go. Soft shot, didn't go in. So a four point lead for Manuel, 5.52 to go. Marshall really gets down the court in a hurry, but they better get out the corner. A.G. behind the back, trying to make some room for himself. And See, this is smart. Over. See, he brings it back to the top of the key, doesn't run this play over. You don't have it, don't force it. A.G. got his own rebound. He beat Grayer, missed the first one, got his own rebound, and scored. Ten points for Arthur A.G. Boy, Manuel, they moved the ball so well, Dan. Sam Davis, first basket of the game, 22-18. Howard Nathan out front with A.G. Nathan's been quiet for some time now. Whoa! Zinnerman found a little gap there, but couldn't get the shot to go down. He almost took a couple of steps. Nathan, Oop, near travel there, too. Nathan, little penetration jump shot right there. Howard Nathan, first basket of the period. Six in the game for him. Six points, five assists for Howard Nathan. Nice tough shot in traffic. Zinnerman in some trouble. 
And a five, five second. second. Nope, they get him for traveling. Same result. Turnover gives the ball back to Manuel. 4.35 to go in the first half. And one of your network sponsors, the American Dairy Associations of Illinois and Wisconsin. Ah, the virtues of milk. Honey, it's starting. Milk helps supply carbohydrate for get up and go. For potassium. Nightgown, socks, makeup. For fast decisions. Mike, hurry! Magnesium for balance. Mike, I'm coming, I'm and coming. vitamin B complex to soothe your nerves. I've already missed the beginning. During life's little misunderstandings. Milk. Honey, are you going out? It does a body good. When my dad died, it was a shock going through all this stuff. I mean, I, I'm sure he knew where everything was, but to me, it was complete chaos. At least for all our insurance, he dealt with one agent who took care of everything. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most, the country is behind you. I guess we're all going to die sometime. My dad just didn't think it would be so soon. Sometimes the media is covering the media. A very interesting crew from PBS is here covering this tournament, and specifically Arthur Agee of Marshall High School. They're doing a four-year documentary on Agee and St. Joe's Westchester's player, William Gates. In fact, this has been a four-year documentary that's covered their entire high school basketball careers. The PBS special will be aired later in the year called Hoop Dreams. That should make it very interesting seeing eye to eye on these two basketball players. Back over to the eyes in the booth, Ken and Dan. All right, Joe, thanks. And uh, a couple of nice careers to focus upon there, too, with Arthur Ragey and William Gates William out of St. Joe's. Nathan Rocket from the corner, no good. Marshall's got it back. Commandos can cut it to four with a basket here. Christian's got the rebound, and Christian is fouled as he goes up for the follow. Nice rebound by Christian. See, he's a wide body, Dan. He takes up a lot of real estate, and you know, you don't have to be tall to rebound. You just have to get good position and be wide. He puts it right back up, and he's fouled. And Sam, Sam go Davis Sam got Davis. it. Yep. It's a four on the team now. So from here on in, both teams will be in the bonus. 4-10 to go in the first half. Cesare, 16 points last night, eight rebounds. Off to a slow start this afternoon, just two points in the game. They get one more free throw. Missed them both. Score stays at 24 18. Rayer looks inside to Clint Ford. It's knocked out of bounds. Manuel hangs on. Manuel's had just about everything go their way so far this, this half. Nathan double teamed on the baseline. Manuel brings it back outside. Booth, Rayer, Booth, Nathan. Walk, beat the double team, but he did. He traveled. Took a little step before he put it on the floor. A little bit of step, nice head fake, trying to get through the double team, but he traveled. Well, with 3.50 to go in the first half, we're still looking for a flow, I think, to this game. Not, not really much in the way of continu uh, continuity on either side yet. It's kind it's of a ragged basketball game. It's been a fast-paced basketball game. You see turnover 7-5, Manuel with the 7. Christian, no good. Here comes Nathan on the run, three on two. And to throw it up and almost made it. With his back to the basket, now Marshall the run out. Two on one. Damn. Marshall passed it. You're two on one, Dan. You over penetrate, you have to pass the basketball. You had a man wide open on the right side. Four, short. I don't think we're gonna break any records for shooting today. No, this game's a little bit ugly right now. In fact, you watch these two teams play in this sequence, and you wonder how they made it this far. Well, Marshall shooting just 38%, eight out of 21. Manuel shooting 43%. Here's the replay. Watch Howard Nathan. This almost went in. He had nowhere to go. He had to throw it up, and that almost went in. He would have had to have added that one to the uh, March Madness video. That one had gone in. 
Moselle Williams has it knocked away, and Nathan's going to take it all by himself. I wonder if he can dump. What do you think? <laughs> I bet he can. Howard has eight in the game. The leading scorer for Manuel. They need it 26-18. Two and a half to play in the first half. Christian turnaround nice shot. Jump shot. Yeah, That's sure right. was. Got himself squared up and shot it up and in from eight feet. Make the basketball well, squared up. Nice shot. Nice look inside by Booth with the air ball by Grayer. Boy, look at Ford keep it alive. Nathan, he's going to get it off. Back iron, Ford rebound, can't get the roll. Again, Nathan, and he'll go to the free throw line. They're playing volleyball on the backboards. The Rams are just having everything their own way when it comes to rebounding on the offensive boards. Look at this. Ford won't go. They're just playing volleyball. Look, orange shirts. Nathan down low, and he's stripped from behind, and he'll be at the line now to shoot two. Marshall not really doing a very good job blocking out. Not at all. If you believe it, the Rams of Peoria Manual, they have seven offensive rebounds. That's an unheard of number. Dick Van Syok looking on, trying to reach that championship game for the first time in a 42-year career. Howard Nathan hits them both. He's got 10 in the game. It's 28-20. Christian, nice look. Nice Kimball play. blocked, though. Zinnerman got it back. It blocked again. And we get a jump ball with Booth and Christian. Possession arrow pointing Marshall's way. The commandos will keep it. Nice break by the Marshall commando, but look at the block, Dan. That's a really nice block by Booth. Zimmerman comes around, gets his shot deflected, and we have the tie-up. But a nice, fast break ran by the Marshall commandos. Ontario Brown to send it in. He does so. Kimball had to reload, missed it. And Marshall loses it to Manuel in the corner. Nathan Whoa. had it knocked away. Derek Booth. Wide open jump shot in the corner is an air ball by Hester. Brown trying to come out and he's fouled. Yeah, he's tripped in the backcourt. Foul on 50, Sam Davis. That's two on Davis and five on the team. Here we go down low, Dan. See, look at this right there where he's tripped. Tripped by Davis. It was an accident. Those are the tough ones to take because he was just trying to get back on defense and he tripped over his man. But hey, it's still a foul. And Marshall needs points on the board. So Ontario Brown now would try to close this gap to six. As he has Ray in the back of his head. <laughs> Ontario Brown, only a sophomore, he makes the first one. <laughs> Christian hits the deck. Somebody had to deliver a pretty good shot to get him on his back, I'll tell you. I heard a thug, but boom. That's the first tournament point for Ontario Brown. He started last night, did not score, and that's his first one this afternoon. Clint Ford replaces Jerry Hester in the manual lineup. Derek Booth also out of there and Freeman back in. Ontario Brown hits them both and brings his club to within six. Four court pressure. Howard Nathan circles back out. This is Freeman. Nathan trying to go down to deal and backside defensive help by Quad L. Kimball, who knocks it out of bounds. 111 for the first half. 28 22, Manuel in front. Field goal shooting this quarter. Manual 25%, Marshall 31%. As we said earlier, we're not going to break any records for shooting. Grayer takes it in the paint and scores. Grayer has six in the game now, and it's an eight point lead again for Manuel. Going back and forth between six and eight. Marshall hanging in there close enough to make a run at him. But they need to score here with less than a minute left. 
A.G. Short. Manuel going to try to run out or yep, run it out. And we'll see what they do here. Well, when Howard Nathan didn't take the break, I think you knew they wanted to run this one out. They circle Nathan around Clint Ford. Now swing at cross court, Tony Freeman. Manuel with a record of 30 and 2. Marshall 24 and 6 for the year. Inside it goes. Nathan can't pass that one up. Howard Nathan with 12. Seven seconds left. Marshall needs to get a quick shot off here. Christian charges. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, they call a block. Sam Davis picks up number three with less than three seconds to go in the half. You know, when you get hit by a guy big as Christian, you better take a charge. It's very close. You would think if you get run over by a guy that size, the least you can do is maybe get the ball back. Hey, I give Sam Davis credit. He has guts. Because ain't no way I'm getting in that man's <laughs> way. <laughs> no way. You may not get up. Chez Christian will go to the free throw line for the one and one. His team down by 10. That's a an important sequence right there. It really is because if he can make these two free throws, then the commandos can stop the Rams. They can go in under double figures. That's a, that's a pretty good momentum builder for the Marshall commandos. Christian made the first. He's been 0 for 2 at the free throw line this afternoon. He'll get one more. Rodrigo Dale on. AG goes out. Christian missed the second, tipped out. But Christian's got back. it back. Ah! Shot off the glass, no good as the buzzer sounds, and that'll do it for the first half. Peoria Manuel heads for that locker room with a nine-point lead over Marshall, 32-23, and kind of a ragged game, Kenny, on the part of both these ball clubs. Yeah, it wasn't a pretty basketball game, but I think Marshall being down just by nine points, like they were last night, that's a momentum builder. All right, right now, Joe Passion standing by with manual coach Dick Van Sayak. You've been in enough of these games. I guess there is no such, such a thing as a safe lead at halftime. That's, that's for sure. We knew this was going to be a tough ball game. Uh, Marshall coming out of that uh, Chicago League, they're a good ball club. Uh, they're letting them play a little bit. It's a good, good first half. I hope we can maintain uh, our style of play. Okay, Dick, thanks very much. We'll talk to Dick Van Sayak later on. Back over to Dan Rohn. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Halftime activities coming up in a moment. Halftime score, 32-23 Emmanuel, and one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. Is living well is the best revenge? Go ahead, live it up. Pork, the other white man. They say that no news is good news. Have we got news for them? Pork, the other white meat. From Assembly Hall, we're at halftime of one of the semi-final games, and right now the Rams of Peoria are leading here at the break over Chicago Marshall. Joe Passion back with you, and I'm joined alongside two veteran high school basketball coaches from different parts of the state, Glenbrook North coach Brian James, whose team, of course, had some great success this year up in the Chicagoland area, and Chuck Bishop of Peoria High School. First off, I want to ask you a little bit about your great player, Chris Collins, and I know his dad, Doug Collins, is here today. We had a chance to talk to him. Uh, a little edgy, I would imagine, knowing you guys had a good chance of being here. Well, uh, we did have a very good high school basketball team. We weren't as good as some of the teams that are down here, but 
for our area, we were very, very happy. We won our league for the first time in 17 years, and you were right, Chris Collins is an excellent player. Chuck, I'm sure you've seen enough of Manuel already this year. You guys met three times, they came out on top. Is this their best brand of ball, despite their poor shooting in the second quarter? I think that Manuel's playing as good as they've played all year. They played exceptional early, uh, but they've been on a real good roll the last two or three ball games, and, and they've got a great team that's playing well right now. You've known Dick Van Sayak a long time. It surprises me, I'm sure it does even you, that 42 years of coaching, he's never made it to the final with all the great manual teams he's had. Yeah, I am, and I, I think this is a great opportunity, but you have to be lucky. Not only do you have to be good, you have to be lucky to get there, and hopefully this will be their year. You know, I wanted to also take the time to talk to both of you about sectional seedings and what it's meant this year, Brian, for teams up north, for example, particularly in the Chicagoland area where everyone's geographically relatively close. What has it meant for teams like Glenbrook North and some of the others out of the Central Suburban Conference? Well, I think it's been good, even though we lost our first game of the regional this year. But I think it's been good because it's created a lot of excitement. And and now you don't have the regionals with four 20-game winners and, and maybe a bad regional where no one's 500. Uh, the, the distance, like you just said, Joe, has not been a problem. The only thing that uh, I would like to see change, and I don't know how they could change it, is uh, we had a couple of teams get four home games because they had the sectional site at their, at their place, and then they were very good on top of that. So if they could f si uh, find some way to change that, I think it's a great format. Okay, Chuck uh, from Central Illinois, has the sectional seedings, is it going to be a good thing in the long run? I think it is. We were in a very tough regional. As uh, Brian mentioned, we would have been in a regional this year with three 20-plus win teams. And uh, I think it's the best. I, I, I think it rewards a team having a good year. They do get a home game or two. In our area, we played a neutral site for sectional. I wouldn't like that either if I had to play. Uh, I would like it if I had four home games. But I think in the long run, it's, it's good. All right, Chuck, great to have you here. Best of luck to your Peoria team next year. Brian, best of luck to Grenbrook North next year. And we'll be back with our second half of the second semifinal game right after this timeout from one of your local sponsors. Taking the time, Will Bram now has almost clear saving as he gets in there. He pivots again and throws it out, and there's Phil Judson all alone, and he scores what might be the clincher. Phil Judson, one of those all-timers from Hebron High School, and that the first televised basketball game of the Illinois High School Association Series, and this being the 40th year, we're all very happy to be a part of that. Uh, first half, Kenny, a little bit sloppy on the part of both these teams. Yeah, I really think so, Dan, but of course, when you have two fast-paced teams, Two teams that like to get up and down the floor. You have a lot of turnovers and kind of a sloppy basketball game. I expect a much better basketball game in the second half. Yep, shooting percentage is way down, turnovers way up. Uh, but uh, Manuel's not that disappointed, being up themselves by a score of 32 to 23 here at halftime. We'll come back with more from the Assembly Hall in Champaign. But right now, one of your network sponsors, well, how about a message from your local station?
Back in Champaign, Manuel leading Marshall 32-23. The winner of this one moves on tonight to play top-ranked Proviso East in the championship game here at the Assembly Hall. Before we get the second half going, we're going to take a look at some of the highlights of the first half, and there were some, Kenny, despite the uh, relative sloppiness of this game, some well, good individual play. Especially Pete Freeman starting in the place of the injured Kevin Deal, an outstanding shot there by Freeman. And, of course, Howard Nathan. These guys, they love to get up and down the floor. Nathan with the layup. Just an outstanding play. Nathan from Clint Ford. Boy, I tell you, the DePaul fans have to be excited because you never know what this guy's going to do. Look, see, he goes right by you for another layup. We talked about Arthur A.G. and the way the Marshall Commandos like to get up and down the floor. This young man is quick. You have to have a safety back. If you don't have a safety back, Arthur A.G. is going to get it right by you. And, hey, he can also show he can rebound and shoot. But, again, our final highlight Look at the steal right there by Howard Nathan. Anticipates so well, great body control, uses the backboard, and of course, Peoria up 32 to 23. That's uh, the basket where Manuel began to open it up some in the first half, and the field goal shooting, as we said, not very good on the part of either of these two clubs. 41 for Manuel, 33, 9 of 27 for Marshall. Uh, not much differential anywhere else, although Marshall has nine turnovers to Manuel's five. Well, I anticipate a much better basketball game. Howard Nathan, the All-American, with 12 in the first half. Ford, 7. Grayer, 6. Those are the manual leaders. And for Marshall, A.G. has 10. Christian, 5. And Kimball, 4. Zinnerman, who had such a good game, particularly in the second half last night, Kenny against Batavia, has not scored yet in the ball game. Well, I think Luther Bedford must really be giving his ball club a going over because they're not back on the floor yet. So I'm sure he's going to say, hey, we have to play better basketball. Let's get better shots. There's nothing wrong with getting up and down the floor. That's what you want to do. But you have to get better shots if you're Marshall. Well, Luther uh, does a great job on that bench, doesn't he? I mean, getting his team ready to play. As you take a look there at Howard Nathan's numbers of the first half. But uh, uh, back to Bedford, we saw him last night work in the bench. He's something else, as you see Nathan with the 12 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds at half. But see, one thing Bedford will do, he really gets his guys emotionally fired up. He'll yell and scream and say, I can't shoot the ball for you. But he really does a great job getting his team prepared. And of course, hey, A.G. had an outstanding half for the Marshall Commandos. He's so quick, he had his 10 points, 1 rebound. But he's the catalyst for the Marshall Commandos. They like to run and gun. But they have to get better shots, Dan, and cut down on the turnovers. Which of these teams at this point would you say would have the better chance against Proviso tonight? Boy, I tell you, Proviso is very, very good. I would think maybe Peoria Manuel because when you have a guy like Howard Nathan, he can just control and dominate a basketball game. Marshall, they really don't have one star. They rely on five men. But it's going to be tough whoever plays Proviso East. Well, one of these two teams we know for sure is just uh, 16 minutes away from a berth in the state championship game. Back with more after these messages from your local station. Let me know when you're rolling. Coach Bedford coming out. Give us a little insight on your locker room discussion, what you have to do here in the second half. Oh, we have to play better defense. That's basically it. And we haven't been executing offensively, so obviously that's what we have to do. All right, Coach, have a great second half. Thank you. Talking to Coach Luther Bedford, what he's got to do in the second half to get his Marshall Commandos in gear. Well, we have to play better defense. That's basically it. And we haven't been executing offensively, so obviously that's what we have to do. All right, Coach, have a great second half. Thank you. All right, let's send it back over to Dan Rohn and Kenny McReynolds. Thank you, Joe. We are ready to get going here in the second half. Manual out on the floor, ready to throw the ball in. Mike Grayer will trigger. 
Well, Luther kept it simple. Told his guys, hey, you're 16 minutes away from a championship contest. Hey, Kenny, they were in the locker room for almost the entire break. <laughs> That's not all he said down there, is it? <laughs> well, I'm sure he may have. Execute better and play execute better defense? better. Probably, you know, use a little chalk talk. Yeah. But they have to get better execution. Nathan rises Howard, up. Nathan. Yeah. Nathan now with 14 in the game. Moved in on two Marshall players that time and shot right over the top. Well, that pass almost hit Freeman in the back, but Marshall hangs on to it. Ontario Brown tied up on the far side. It's knocked out of bounds by Manuel. But Marshall really needs a basket. See, if they can get a basket, Dan, it may build some momentum on the offensive end. Christian that lead nice shot tip. no good. Kimball, well, that shot hit the rim three times and wouldn't go. Now Christian again no good. And it wouldn't have counted anyway. They call Cesare Christian for traveling. Boy, I tell you, they just can't get a break. You heard Kimball scream, oh, when he uh, had his layup, but it just wouldn't fall. The commandos just can't get a break. Manuel hooks the press, no problem. Nathan trying to post up down low against Zinnerman. Does in the turnaround shot. Bounces off the iron, no good. Look Howard with the steal. What Great pass. pass to four. And Zinnerman, I thought for a second, was banged up. He's okay. He bounced off the big man, Clint Ford. But watch the pass. See, watch the inbound steal by Howard Nathan. Now watch the bullet pass. They hit. You can take it forward. Zinnerman just bounces right off. <laughs> That had to hurt. That had to hurt. That is one big young man right there. Clint, Clint Ford. <laughs> Manual by 11. Six and a half to go in the third period. They're in no hurry. Davis shot tipped as it went up and knocked out of bounds to Manuel. Zinnerman, the last Marshall player to get a hand on that one. Boy, the commandos have come out flat. They just can't seem to get it on track. Nathan to throw in and keep an eye on him. He gets it back, circles around a screen by Freeman and scores again. Boy, isn't that something? Inbounds pass, the ball is loose. Nathan comes inbounds, picks it up and scores two. Biggest lead of the afternoon, 36-23. Manuel starting to pull away a bit. Kimball lost it out of bounds. Luther Bedford goes to his bench now. 42, Moselle Williams will check into the next whistle. Marshall showed us last night they have the ability to come back. They trailed Batavia by as many as 11 in the game and came back to knock off the Bulldogs. We'll see what they can do here with 5.45 to go in the third. They trail by 13. It'll be a hold. Fidel Kimball picks it up. Two quick team fouls now on Marshall. Well, you definitely don't want to get in foul trouble and put Manuel on the free throw line. It just seems like Marshall's not in sync, man. You know, they've come out flat. I'm sure these guys realize that, hey, this is a championship tournament. They want to play Proviso East tonight, but they just can't seem to get it going. Like, they're not on all, hitting on all cylinders. Nathan deep in the corner, on the floor. Pull back, jump shot is in. He was wrapped up in a headlock by A.G. and thrown to the floor after he made it, but Nathan has 18 in the game now. Well, he's hitting on all cylinders. Chez Christian leans in and scores. That's a tough, a tough shot. shot and a big one for Marshall as they try to hang in here. They're going to pressure the basketball, try to get some steals. Good look by Clint Ford. The shot is up and no good, though, by Grayer. Manuel gets away with a walk there, but Nathan scores again as he comes down the lane for two. 20 for they Howard have Nathan. have to, you know, do something to stop Howard Nathan. I think Luther wants a timeout. 
The game getting away from Marshall just a little bit here with 4.54 left in the third. They're down 15 in one of your network sponsors, the Toyota dealers of Illinois. Welcome back to Toyota's big league sales event. Stop with the four runners on, on deck. deck. Toyota These trucks. Toyotas have been number one with the fans for years. Hi, Gaylord Perry. What's Luciano doing? He's checking out the four runner deal. I think they're loading up savings on the option package up to 800. They're putting something extra on everything up to 900 on four befores and incentives up to 1,000. Get out of here. It's a great deal. It looks like I could learn something about loading one up from these guys. Your Toyota dealer's putting his best stuff on every deal. We're really playing ball. They'll think you slaved over a hot stove for hours. We won't tell if you won't. Pork. The other white meat. Still in the dark about the other white meat? Today's pork isn't what it used to be. Pork. The other white meat. On business in Champaign-Urbana, stay at the only all-suites hotel, Amerisuites. Amerisuites offers complimentary continental breakfast, attractive meeting rooms for business, and a year-round jacuzzi. Call 1-800-272-8590 or 217-398-3400. Amerisuites. You're listening to the Sterling Band. Sterling High School, the first time they've ever been here to Champaign competing. They won a competition in their audition with over 100 schools. The band leader is Mike McCoy. And the best place to listen to the band is right from the middle of the band. Now let's get back into the middle of the game with Dan Roan and Kenny McCrennan. All right, Joe, thanks. You noticed, Kenny, he was smart enough not to stand in front of the tuba. <laughs> but it's been a Howard Nathan show so far. Nathan has all eight of Manuel's points this quarter. There you see Nathan. Eight in the period, 20 for the game for the All-American guard. His team up by 15 with 4.48 to go in the third quarter. It's a good shot by Marshall. They just can't get it to fall. Right off the back iron, right on target, but a bit too long. Manuel doing a pretty good job on the boards now, too. A five-second call. Five second Howard ball. Nathan pressured by Derek Zinnerman, and the turnover gives it back to Marshall. Well, you had the same call last night. Let's see if we can see it. Zinnerman really guarding Nathan closely. The referee says five-second violation, Marshall's ball. Zinnerman penetration shot, didn't get anything, but the rebound up there and in by Moselle Williams. Williams gets his first basket of the afternoon, a big one too. It's 40-27, Marshall down 13. We head down toward four minutes to play in the third, and as they come quickly up the floor, Zinnerman called for the foul as he got the elbow into the side of Howard Nathan. Yeah, a little push with the elbow right to Nathan's side. That's one way to try to slow him down. Now that's four. On Zimmerman, so he'll have to sit down. Zimmerman to the bench, Rodrigo Dale in to replace him. So Luther Bedford loses one of his star senior guards there to some foul trouble in the third period. Rayer penetration, left hand shot, did not go. Great battle for the rebound. Davis missed it. And a whistle and a foul called. Over I believe the against back? Marshall, yeah. On Marshall. Rodrigo Dale, 22. Right off the bench, Rodrigo Dale. Boy, but look at the way Manuel, they just play body ball. One shot, won't go. Rodrigo Dale with a little push to Howard Nathan's back. Back live we come as they go up for the shot off the inbounds pass. Clint Ford is fouled. Ford will get two, and that'll be the fifth team foul on Marshall. Manuel has not committed a foul yet in the second half. And now they go to the free throw line. Now this could just be a free throw shooting contest for the Rams of Peoria Manuel. Manuel's pretty good foul shooting team. They shot 69% during the regular season. Among their starting five players, Grayer, 67, Nathan, 77, and Clint Ford, this man, a 75% free throw shooter. Well, he has a nice touch. He's shown us this afternoon the way he's hit that baseline jump shot. He made them both. It's nine points in the game for Clint Ford. 
and a 15-point manual lead with 3.55 to go in the third. Commandos need to step it up offensively. They're working against the press. They clear it to Christian. He's going to shoot it on the baseline, and he got the roll finally. Finally got the roll. Christian Marshall had no trouble with the press. Boy, if they can do that, they can get back into this basketball game. Chez Christian with nine points. Nathan turned it over. Double dribble. As soon as he touched it, it was double dribble. Yeah, you can't catch your own pass. Big man Robin Dunnigan checks in for Marshall. And Rodrigo Dale sits. Marshall, 12 turnovers. Manuel, 7. Marshall shooting just 35%. The boy, Manuel, they won't give up. They pressure the basketball. They want to create some turnovers, get some offense from their defense. They just keep coming and coming and coming at you despite the big lead. Williams to Christian, to AG for three. That's going to be way short. Loose ball picked up inside by Williams, and he's fouled on the reach-in by Howard Nathan. Nathan had the basketball, lost control of it, then reached in and just grabbed the arm. Second personal foul on Howard Nathan, just the first on the team in the third period for Manuel, so Marshall will inbound underneath its own basket. Christian going to fire up the shot off the glass and in. Tough shot by Chez Christian. Six in the period for him and 11 for the game. Marshall back within 11. And now Christian keeping the commandos close. It's a lot like last night's Batavia game, Kenny. Marshall looking like a possible blowout candidate, but hanging in there. But this hurts. Howard Nathan drains the three. Nathan has 11 in the period. Well, you have to locate Howard Nathan. A lot of contact inside, but no whistle. And Clint Ford comes out of there with a the basketball. Well, you're not going to get the ball away from Clint Ford once he has his hands on it. Grayer Skip skips pass. it over to Freeman. Freeman into the lane. Freeman's shot is short. Moselle Williams around the basketball a lot in this third period for Marshall. Got the rebound. No over and back call. Freeman, uh, I should say Grayer, had poked it away. Brown in trouble. A.G. circles out near the half court line with it. A.G. drops it down for the big man. Robin Dunnigan score. His first two. Huh? Rare to penetrate and a tripping call against 11 Arthur A.G. Boy, Grayer really had an explosive first step, Dan. He just got by A.G. and A.G. trying to catch up from behind, trips him. So now, again, the um, Peoria Manual Rams are in the bonus. So now every time they're fouled, they'll be at the free throw line. Mike Grayer steps up. 67% free throw shooter. Way up and straight down through. Mike Greer puts it up about as high as anybody I've seen. That's up in section C. <laughs> Boy, look at the arc on that. Didn't get the roll that time and the rebound, Dunnigan. Penetration move by A.G. Slapped out of there by Manuel. They've got two on one. Booth oh, with a nice, nice fake and a score. Derek Booth. Ontario Brown anticipated wrong. Booth went right around for nice two points. Beautiful layup by Booth. And Manuel's lead back to 15 with a minute 20 left in the third. Dunnigan drops it inside. Nathan poked it away. Manuel still has it. This is Nathan. Nice pass, knock it down. Grayer scores, biggest lead of the game now. 17 for Manuel. You know, I wonder, does Nathan get dizzy with all the spinning he does? I wonder if he gets dizzy at all. Good step in by Sam Davis to the glass. And we get a blocking block. foul called against Marshall. Ontario Brown will pick it up. 
Ontario Brown just couldn't get there in time. Well, here's, we'll take it from the steal. See right there, nice pick. Beautiful pick by Davis. Watch Ontario Brown. See, he tried to get position, Dan, but he was just there a little too late. Didn't have position at all, and everything now is going the way of the Rams of Peoria Manual. Two free throws coming up for Sam Davis, the six foot one inch senior. Two points in the game for him. Dunnigan uh, takes a seat now, and Moselle Williams comes back on for Marshall as Luther Bedford tries to find a combination here that can handle the Rams. It's been a very rough third period for the Commandos of Marshall. There's still time left in this basketball game, but they have to find a way to control Howard Nathan. Davis missed them both. Kimball in the lane, pulled it back and scored. Nice shot by Waddell Kimball. Marshall put it under pressure, but the Rams have no trouble with it at all. Nathan's got it on a string out front. Derek Booth. Rams looking for a final shot here in the third period with 20 seconds left. Well, Stop Booth's got one that he can't pass up. He scored and sent him up to the line. Boy, Dan, we've seen this all tournament. You have to stop the man with the ball. They just let Derek Booth. Look at this. Nobody challenges Derek Booth. So he says, okay, I'll take it. And then Williams is forced to come over and try to block the shot while everyone else just stood around and let Booth just have an easy path right to the basket. Derek Booth will have one with 16.9 seconds left in the third period. Derek missed it short. John Lacey, number 25 in there for Marshall. Ball knocked away, a near steal. But Jerry Hester stepped on the sideline and Marshall keeps it with nine seconds left. See Luther Bedford's mind working over there, trying to get something figured out. John Lacey fouled in the double team situation by Booth. Still no free throws though. Only two team fouls against the Rams. The Rams are sitting pretty in the foul situation. Nathan took it away. He's gone. Oh, he missed the layup. And that'll do it for quarter number three. Some fast action to end the third. 52-33 manual, one of your network sponsors is Country Company. Now they all arrived practically at once. Red Cross, National Guard, and the insurance people from Country Companies. You know, nobody's gonna forget that Allendale tornado. Half the town was wiped out. But within a day, the people from Country Companies were there with money. Getting people back on their feet. Country Companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. They finished when a lot of the other insurance companies were just getting started. Down here on courtside, a lot of attention is being given throughout the state of Illinois by the visiting working press. The media here, over 250 members, 25 radio stations broadcasting throughout the state, over a dozen TV stations are here, and over 100 newspapers on hand to cover the second oldest statewide basketball series in the country, March Madness in Illinois. Back over to Dan and Ken. Hey, Joe, thank you very much. And here's how we ended the third quarter. Howard, Howard Nathan. Nathan, man, I'll From tell you behind what. With the left hand, tipped it over to the right side. 
and he just had a little bit too much English, and he can't believe he missed the layup. Ontario Brown let him go. I think Howard was anticipating some contact. Yeah. Boy, 11 points in the third quarter, 23 overall. And he looks a lot like Maurice Douglas. The Bears safety, he does look like it. Marshall's got it to start the final period. Christian looking for a shot, can't get it. They go baseline to John Talacy. Well, Marshall had to really start putting up some shots now. Zinnerman found a lane but couldn't get the shot to go down. Here's Hester and now Nathan. Wide open Grayer got the layup. 54-35, biggest lead of the game now. Manuel by 19. Shot by Christian, blocked by Booth, but David, David Booth? Well, I Derek called, Booth. I called him David last <laughs> night. I knew we would call him David at one time. Derek Booth. Call for the personal, his second. That's three on the team. But this one is a two-shot situation for Ches Christian. Christian having a rough ride at the free throw line this afternoon. He is one out of five so far. He can't get a break. Got the second one. Full court pressure by the commando. They need a steal. Nathan double teamed. He weasels his way out of it and gets a four on two break for his trouble. Now triple team. Look he at heaves this. it back over his head and they save it. Oh my goodness. He's like Mercury out there. You just can't get a handle on the can't guy. Can't get a handle on him. And uh, if Joey Myers watching, I'm, I know he can't wait till October 15th. The first day of practice. Nathan over here to Grayer and Manuel calls a timeout. So timeout with 6.42 to go. The Rams in control. It's 54-36 and one of your network sponsors, the Toyota dealers of Illinois. We're back at Toyota's big league sales event. Bases loaded with the league leader in saves, Tercel. Batting cleanup, your Toyota dealer. In good shape with the best buy like Tercel. He's headed to first with a big deal on America's lowest price, two-door sedan. Deal. Second, same great deal, 65.88. Deal. Thanks. And with the all-new four-door third. Deal. He's really stretching one out. It's out of here. They're all out of here. Clean up now at your Toyota dealer. We're, We're really, really playing, playing ball. ball. Dan Rohn and Kenny McReynolds back at the Assembly Hall in Champaign. We invite your comments on these tournament telecasts. Just drop a note to IHSA TV, P.O. Box 2715, Bloomington, Illinois, 62702. And we thank you for your interest. I can tell you one thing. The reviews on the play of Howard Nathan will be very good indeed. Look at that. He was falling out of bounds. Just throws the basketball back. An outstanding play by Howard Nathan. And the Rams fans can smell it in the assembly hall. They're making some noise. With six and a half left, they lead it by 18. Well, some people say they're the best team in the state. Some say Proviso East is the best. We may be about to find out tonight at 8 o'clock. Some say Nathan's the best player. Some say Sherrill Ford is the best. Here's Nathan. Two more votes for him. Howard Nathan had 25 last night. He's got 25 in this one. And Dick Van Syok may be about to take that ride to the state finals for the first time. Here they come again. Nathan's got two men with him. Fly pass. Hester fouled by A.G. Sophomore Jerry Hester will step up to the free throw line for two. Well, Dan, now you're going to go up, it looks like, if you hold this 20-point lead against Provisor Reeves. And watch the pass go. He doesn't look, just dishes it off to the man streaking down the right side. 
and Hester will be at the line for two. I think now, as the Howard Nathan fan club is here, if I'm Peoria now, maybe I'll let the bench play because you have a game in a few hours, and why not you save your legs? Well, you might say that for both ball clubs. Marshall has to come back very quick turnaround to play in a consolation game at 6.30. Right. But uh, actually, it looks like Dick Van Sayak's got some of his other guys in there. Booth has played a lot. Hester has played a lot. Reddick's been in there. And here's what's happening on the bench over there. Hey, I took Mike out because he didn't go get that ball down there. He started running. Luckily, we come out of there with it. I'm not going to put up with that stuff. You got to go get that basketball. Everybody's wanting to run down and get a fast break fast. We don't need points right now. That ball's the most important thing. Don't stop the clock. Keep the clock running. Okay. They're going to start releasing. You can make sure yeah. you're back. They're going to start releasing. We're straight 21. Clint, that means when the ball is weak side, you're on I'm the block, defense, right? Man. When the ball is weak side with you, you're on the block. Mike. We're not stalling. We're looking to score our regular 21, and we got the layup law. You missed Clint. As soon as you got that I'm ball, Clint middle. was open to the weak side. I'm in the middle of 21. Well, defense, Tony, back you're there. back on defense on. there. Let's go, guys. Don't foul. Let's go. Stop Don't, foul. Don't foul. Come on now. You got to talk out a little bit. Well, Dick Van Sayak, 5.55 away from making the state tournament championship game for the first time, and he's not about to let his players <laughs> lose their enthusiasm here. He said, go get the basketball. He said, I took him out because he didn't get a loose ball. Yeah, but my thinking is, you know, you have to soon start thinking about resting your starters. Look at the points of the paint. Peoria, 18, Marshall just six. Manuel dominating this game in just about every phase, and Hester makes the first one. The Rams will need to be ready tonight because they're up against an outstanding basketball team in Proviso East. Well, you talk about having your track shoes on. Zinnerman gets it off the glass. First basket of the game for Derek Zinnerman. Derek Booth for the Rams. Booth working behind a couple of screens and back outside it comes to Howard Nathan. AG right up on Nathan. You can't play him that closely, I don't think. No, because he'll go right by you. Howard missed that one. He's 11 of 21 from the floor. Shot knocked away. Ford's got it in the lane. Trying to clear. In big trouble. Taken away and Kimball drops it in. But Al Kimball with eight in the game. 57-40, Marshall. Down by 17 and still scratching here with five minutes left in the game. The Rams are looking to score. They're not looking to run the clock out. Well, Dick Van Syck also said, we don't need points. We need the basketball. They've got it now, and they've run off about 30 seconds. They're looking for the back door. They've got Hester over there in the baseline. He's going to take the shot. It's short, and it's out of bounds to Manuel. They say Rodrigo Whoa. Dale knocked it out. Boy, Marshall just can't get a break. Tony Freeman up off the Rams bench. We'll see if he comes in. He does. He's going to check in and... Uh, well, Grayer is in and Freeman is out. I thought they might rest Howard Nathan there, Kenny, but he's still on. Well, I think I would. Grayer with a penetration move down the line and scoring. 13 points for Mike Grayer. Look for Marshall to start putting up some shots, but they turned the basketball over. Hollering high low. Grayer, there's your low, low right there. Low. <laughs> Ford had it knocked away, but he's been fouled. But you can't get around Ford. There's no way. Try as you may. Here it is again. Now watch Ford, number 54. He had his man sealed off. Kimball comes from behind with the foul. But see how he had Christian pinned off? A lot of beef down low. 
Quinn Ford will get two. He's three out of four at the free throw line this afternoon. Ford had 19 in the quarterfinal win over Rock Island last night. He's got nine in this one. And Dick Van Syok edging ever closer to the final game tonight. Derek Booth, the offensive board. Everything going the way of the Rams. They want the high-low again. Poked away. Here comes Zinnerman. Grayer tried to get him from behind, but could not, and Zinnerman catches in. Knocked out of bounds. Manuel keeps it. Well, at least the commandos have not quit, Dan. There's one thing you have to say. They're trailing 59-42. Full court pressure, these young men, they're going all out because they know the game's not over yet. The commandos, 18 turnovers. Peoria, just nine. Clint Ford has come out, Kenny, the big man, and I think he'll probably sit for the rest of the game. He's been replaced by Lee Reddick, and we get a whistle. And another foul on Zinnerman, who's... Just fouled out of this game. Foul number 10, Derek Zinnerman, his fifth. That will put Nathan at the free throw line. Zinnerman gone with 3.21 to go. He had four points in the game this afternoon after a 13-point effort in the quarterfinals against Batavia. Here's Howard Nathan, 25 points, seven assists, four steals, five rebounds. Not a bad day's work. Luther Bedford looking down his bench to find a replacement. I think Zinnerman just realized he's gone. It's a handshake from Howard Nathan on his way out. Rodrigo Dale will check in for him. Of course, we'll see Derek in the consolation game. Howard Nathan shoots two. Two coming up for Nathan, who's made his only two shots from the line this afternoon. Three out of three, 26 in the game. Sixty to 42. Three fifteen left at the Assembly Hall. Second semifinal. The winner here, and it looks like Peoria Manuel to take on the Pirates of Proviso East tonight. Booth, nice look inside. The shot up and off the glass. No good by Grayer. Out of bounds. Manual ball. You know, I was just thinking for Peoria Manual, you come in here, you defeat an outstanding Marshall Commando basketball team, and your prize is to take on the top-ranked team in the state. With about five hours between games. Right. Nathan throws it up off the top of the board. He didn't get it, but he will get a couple of free throws. Yeah, there's no question that the uh, Pirates of Proviso East, they're back at the hotel oh, getting some rest. Well, I can tell you they'll need it trying to keep up with these guys tonight. Now that should be a fast-paced basketball game. They'll have the speed of Peoria Manual, but they'll really be outsized by that front line of Proviso. They throw it at you, don't they? The three amigos, Ford and Boyce and Finley. I, I think you gotta get, you gotta get Nathan out now. Brown's gonna jack it up for three. Peoria's got the rebound. Howard Nathan's got the ball. Pretty safe place for it to be if you're a manual fan. Derek Booth thought about it, didn't he? He really did. <laughs> he turns it over. Just like his brother. Ontario Brown. Shooting. Shot blocked from behind by Nathan, but A.G. there to clean up. A.G. has 12, and Howard Nathan just showing us some more. Block. Yep. We get a blocking foul on Quadell Kimball. Four on him as he stepped in front of 44, Lee Reddick on the way down the floor. Well, now I think Nathan's coming out 
28 points, seven assists, four steals, six rebounds. Not a bad afternoon's work for that man. Well, I tell you, 25 last night, 28 this afternoon, and one more game, the game, coming the game. up tonight. Lee Reddick steps up and drains the first of his two free throws. First point of the tournament for Reddick, six foot one inch senior. Made them both. Brandon Whitaker, freshman, into the game, replacing Howard Nathan. Chess Christian, long three pointer, way short. Manuel bangs out of there with it, and a foul on AG. Well, AG won't give up going for the steal in the backcourt. I tell you, that's AG's fifth, I believe, right, Dan? That his fifth? Yep, he fouls out. But he just never quit. He just kept going for the basketball. The commandos just couldn't get it on track. Jay just never recovered. You know, it seemed like they didn't click on all cylinders. They'll have a couple of hours to think about it and come back and play a good Libertyville team in the Constellation Championship. And I'll tell you what, that third place trophy is not a bad thing to have in your trophy case. So we should see an outstanding basketball game coming up at about 6.30. Sean Harrington comes on. And A.G. gone. So the two senior guards have fouled out here. Zinnerman with six. And that's a rough way to go, isn't it? It really is. But you have the third place game tonight. And I'm sure they'll come back and play extremely well. in the game from Mike Grayer. And Mike will take a seat and start thinking about Proviso East as Marshall's bench is trying to get itself ready for a consolation matchup tonight with Libertyville. Harrington got it to Dale, and Dale took it on down. And oh. a jam rebound. Oh, come oh, on, come ref. On. Quadell Kimball jammed it home off the missed shot, and they call a technical foul on Kimball yeah, for but see, hanging on the rim. I think he had to hang on the rim because well, he sure had a he couple did. of men under him. See? There's all kinds of traffic in there. See, if he doesn't hold, he comes right down on Williams' neck. It's kind of a silly call, especially at this stage in the game. Yeah. But it looks, you know, the dunk looks nice. What it means is Lee Reddick gets another chance at that free throw line where he's three for three. Made them both, four for four. 22 point lead now for Manuel and they're just well, I hanging around for the finish up in the Manuel section. I see Robert Collins, the assistant coach from DePaul, probably just flew in from Dayton, Ohio behind the bench of your Emmanuel, and I know he's extremely happy to see how well Howard Nathan has played today. This is Hester, has it blown out of there by Dunnigan. And another block by Dale from behind, and a save inbounds. Great play by Rodrigo Dale. Dale's gonna jack it up for three on the other end. Could have been a hero all over the place there, and a good pass inside. This is Dunnigan, and Dunnigan fouled as he went up for the shot by number 44, Lee Reddick. Well, if you're a Peoria Manuel bench, you don't want them to stop the clock. Because let's face it, you have the big lead. You have a 22-point lead with a minute and a half to go. Uh, There's a guy look. representing some of the future. Yeah, Ruben Ruben Bedford right, right here. Uh, Robin Dunnigan, 6'8", only a junior. He'll be back next year. Christian will be back. Here's Proviso. He'll hit. Here's Pirates. It's going to be manual in the final tonight. 
Andre Wallace comes in for Marshall. We've got substitutions now for Manuel too. Earl Jackson in there. Number 10 is Jim Cross, 42. Keith Johnson, 24. Brandon Whitaker. And Dunnigan makes the second of his two. You know what would have been a nice matchup last night? Howard Nathan against Kenny Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> If nobody else on DePaul can handle Anderson last night. Maybe Nathan will get his shot next year. Manual guys looking for some hoops here in the final oh, minute every, and a half. Everybody's looking for hoops now, Dan. Get a chance to play. Dale with a nice ball. pass. Dale hit Dunnigan on the dead run, and Dunnigan hammered it home. He's got five in the game. 111 left. The penetration here by Whitaker. Another bust out if they can catch up, but uh, that ball goes out of bounds and the Rams will have it. Well, it's time now for everybody to try to get into the scoring column. And a great run for Luther Bedford's team. Knocked off King and then Westinghouse in the Public League Championship game. And then an upset victory last night over Batavia, but the string of upsets stops here. Earl Jackson called for double dribble. Less than a minute. And you see Luther Bedford hollering, come on, let's go. He wants these young men to execute. And they do. A sweet penetration move by Harrington. And now a pass thrown out of bounds. Marshall gets it back with 38 seconds left. Dick Van Syok is headed to that championship game for the first time. It's after 42 years coaching. Nobody deserves it more. He's a happy man right now. Dale got the tip. Marshall making it a little bit more respectable here. Boy, a sweet pass on the penetration there, but out of bounds as Keith Johnson couldn't handle it. So the matchups tonight. We come on the air at 6 o'clock on the IHSA Network. Third place game, Marshall and Libertyville, and then championship game the one that a lot of people were expecting to have happen Peoria Emanuel and top rank Proviso East should be a good one two seconds final shot up and no good and this one is over the final score Emanuel 68 the Marshall Commandos 55 one of your network sponsors country companies When my dad died, it was a shock going through all this stuff. I mean, I, I'm sure he knew where everything was, but to me, it was complete chaos. At least for all our insurance, he dealt with one agent who took care of everything. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most, the country's behind you. I guess we're all going to die sometime. My dad just didn't think it would be so soon. has paid his dues longer or with more honor and respect than Dick Van Syck, 42 years head coaching. You're finally to the finals. How's it feel? Yeah, it feels great, believe me. Uh, it has been a long time, and it, this has never been uh, one of my dreams, honestly, but it's mighty happy to be playing in the finals. Congratulations, Dick. We'll see you tonight in the championship game. My pleasure, Joe. All right, we will be back with more of our post game, but one of our network sponsors is the Illinois Pork Producers. They say if you've seen one, you've seen them all. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Pork, the other white meat.
Peoria Manual, a winner, 68-55 over Marshall. Tonight, it's Manual and Proviso East. Well, you have two of the best players in the state, Sherelle Ford against Howard Nathan, who put on a great show today. I can't wait. Should be a great game tonight. We'll see you at 6 o'clock for the telecast right now. Let's go back to Joe Passion. All right, on behalf of Dan Roan and Kenny McReynolds and Tom Stocker earlier in our other semifinal, I'm Joe Passion from Assembly Hall. Thanks for being with us, and join us back again tonight at 6 o'clock for the championships of the Illinois High School Basketball Tournament. This tournament telecast has been brought to you by, for more than 20 years, Country Companies Insurance. You've got the country behind you. The dairy farmers of Illinois and Wisconsin remind you to enjoy real dairy products. Look for the real seal in your grocer's dairy case. And the Toyota dealers of Illinois. I love what you do for me, Toyota.